good morning to one and all. I am a postgraduate student of Department of Oral Pathology of Street Biology Delhi College and Hospital. Today I am going to discuss about the topic nucleus. So what are all the contents we are going to see under this? Introduction, history, occurrence, then position, staining property, morphology, ultrastructure of the nucleus under which nuclear envelope, nucleoplasm, chromatin fibers, nucleolus and last function. Introduction. The nucleus is an important cell organelle. Like the central nervous system of our body, brain, it is the brain of the cell or controlling center. Chromosome contains large amount of DNA and genes. Due to the presence of genes, the nucleus controls the various cellular activities. So history. It was first discovered and named by Robert Brown in 1833. And the nucleolus was first discovered and named by Bowman in 1840. Chromatin was named by W. Dot, uh, w. Fleming, that is 1879, and cytoplasm and nucleoplasm, Strasburger in 1882. Occurrence and position. Occurrence. It is found in all eukaryotic cells of plants and animals. Exception is mature seed tubes and uh, erythrocytes. Prokaryotes, that is bacteria, lack true nucleus. Position. It is usually position at center but change time to time according to metabolic state. It also takes eccentric position. Staining properties. Fluorescent dyes with aromatic amino or guanidine groups such as propidium iodide, ethidium bromide, diaminophenylin rule, acridin orange and Hoshes dyes interact with nucleotides to emit fluorescence. So these dyes interact with the nucleotides the fluorescent that is the staining property. Morphology. The number is mononuclear cells and binuclear. According to the number, it is can be it can be categorized as mononuclear cells and the binuclear cells. For example, for binucleate is paramecium, hepatocytes, and chondrocytes. For polynuclear cells, three to hundred. Example, osteoclast, syncytial cell. So according to the shape. Shapes, what are all the shapes the nucleus is having? Spheroid, oval, round, discoid, ellipsoid, and irregular. Example, squamous epithelium exhibits discoid shape. Glucosides exhibits irregular nucleus. So different shapes of nucleus. In this picture, we can able to see the different shapes of nucleus. In monocyte and multi lobed nucleus here in the second picture, which is neutrophil and the basophil, then lymphocyte. And uh, the um, bilobed the nucleus shape is is no. Then comes the size. Generally, it occupies ten percent of cell volume. That is one is to four. Size varies in the diameter depending upon the cell type. Size of the nucleus varies in case of malignancy. So, Hertwig gives formula for determining the size of the nucleus, where B n by B c minus Vn, where Np is the nucleoplasmic ratio, Bc is the volume of the cell, and Vn is the volume of the nucleus. So, according to the formula, we can frame it as nucleoplasmic ratio is equal to volume of the nucleus divided by volume of the cell minus volume of the nucleus. So, size is related with ploidy level. For example, haploid cells have small size to nucleus than diploid and polyploid cells and vice versa. Thus, size depends on cell volume, amount of DNA and protein, metabolic phase of cell. So, this is the picture exhibiting the anatomy of the nucleus, where nuclear envelope can be seen, chromatin and nucleolus. Inside the nucleus, we can able to see the nucleolus and the extra uh, cellular organelles such as endoplasmic reticulum and nuclear pore can also be seen along with this. So, here in this uh, second picture, we can able to see the nucleolus surrounded by the chromatin and the nucleoplasm and the nuclear pore. In cell, we will see about the cytoplasm, whereas in nucleus, we will see about the nucleoplasm. So, nuclear pore and nuclear envelope. Ultrastructure. Under ultrastructure, nuclear envelope, it encloses DNA. Then, it is formed from spherical inner nuclear membrane, which is 5 to 10 nanometer thick. It contains proteins 
acts as a binding site for IFS nuclear lamina. Outer nuclear membrane, it continues with endoplasmic reticulum, studded with ribosomes proteins. Perinuclear space is 10 to 50 nm diameter. It contains fibers, lipid droplets, crystalline deposits. So in this picture, we can able to see the outer membrane and the inner membrane. So outer membrane is seen in the top of the picture along with the nuclear pore complex in the side of the picture. And then comes the perinuclear phase. Then inner membrane and nuclear lamina can be seen. This is the nuclear envelope anatomy. So where the entire uh, nuclear wall is surrounded by the ribosomes, which is started onto the nuclear membrane. Nuclear lamina, protein mesh work, 50 to 80 nanometer thick. It lines inside surface of inner nuclear membrane. It plays a crucial role in assembly of interface nuclei. Nuclear pores structure, it is circular, diameter 10 nm to 100 nm. Nuclear pore complex, the molecular weight of which is 50 to 100 million daltons, have octagonal symmetry, contains two rings, large particles that central plug and radial spokes. Proteins, integral membrane proteins, sorry, integral membrane proteins, a glycoprotein of 120k daltons, transport proteins of 63k daltons can be seen here. So here comes the nuclear core complex. In this picture, we can able to see the central transporter and spoke ring assembly, cytoplasmic filament, cytoplasmic ring, outer and the inner nuclear membrane. So the nuclear basket can be seen at the base of the apparatus, that is nuclear pore complex. Pore density, what is the density of the nuclear pore? It is correlated with the transcriptional activity of the cell. Transport through nuclear pores. If cell is synthesizing DNA, it, need, it needs to import histone molecules from cytoplasm every three minutes for packaging DNA. So mRNA complex with specific or special proteins forming ribonucleoprotein particles or actively export through nucleus. So in this picture, we can able to see the transport of proteins through nuclear pore complex. Here the protein is transported into the nucleus through the nuclear pore where the RNA is comes, uh, comes out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore in case of transcription and translation process which can be seen in the uh, upcoming slides. So next comes the nucleoplasm. It is transparent, semi-solid, granular, slightly acidophilic. Other names are nuclear sap or karyolim. It composed of nucleic acids which consists of di deoxyribose nucleic acid in DNA and ribose nucleic acid which is RNA. Proteins, complex proteins categorized into basic proteins. So which takes the basic stains. Now, how come it's named as basic protein? It takes the basic stains. For example, nucleoprotamines usually bound with DNA and nucleohistone. Non-histones or acidic proteins are also seen, for example, of which is phosphoproteins. Enzymes. It contains enzymes necessary for DNA and RNA synthesis. What are all the enzymes? Example are polymerases, NAD synthesis, adenosine deaminases, valase, aldolase, etc. It also contains cofactors and coenzymes like ATP and acetyl-CoA. Next comes lipids. It consists of a small lipid content only. Next, minerals. Contains several inorganic compounds such as calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, etc. Chromatin fibers. What are chromatin fibers? It carries genetic information. So, the genetic information is stored in the molecules of DNA that makes up the chromosome. What is the DNA then? We have to know about DNA before going into this chromatin fiber. So, what is the DNA? It is nothing but the hereditary material in human. So, double helix formed by base pairs, where the base pairs are adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. So, it can be seen in this picture. Some regions of the chromosomes remain condensed, staying deeply and are visible by light microscope as chromatin. So, some region of chromosomes which is condensed in nature, it will on staining, it will stain deeply and it is visible.
visible under the light microscope as chromatin. Ultrastructurally, chromatin appears as a nuclear protein, 20 to 30 nm in diameter. Thread-like, foiled, and much elongated structures can also be seen. It takes the basic states like basic version observed only during interface. Interface, where we saw interface, we will see in the upcoming slides. It is nothing but the in the mitosis of the cell cycle. So this diagram explains the DNA molecule, proteins, chromatin fibers and chromosomes. What are all this? So how come it is formed? So short region of DNA double helix is formed in the first thing. Then beads, it forms into a beads on a string form of chromatin. Then 30 nanometer chromatin fiber of packed nucleosomes can be seen. Sections of chromosome in an extended form can be seen. Out of which condensed section of chromosome can be seen. At last, entire mitotic chromosome uh, is formed as a uh, pair, where a uh, central mirror can be seen at last. So, at last, chromosome can be seen. Types: heterochromatin and pu-chromatin. What is heterochromatin? It is darkly stained condensed region, supposed to be metabolically and genetically inactive. It because it contains small amount of DNA and large amount of RNA. Neochromatin, it is lightly stained and diffused region. See the difference between the heterochromatin and euchromatin. Heterochromatin is nothing but the darkly stained and condensed region, whereas the euchromatin is lightly stained and diffused region. So it is genetically active in case of euchromatin. It is genetically inactive in case of heterochromatin. Large amount of DNA is present in euchromatin, whereas small amount of DNA is present in heterochromatin. So, the interface nucleus and the pro-metaphase nucleus. How the nucleus appears in interface. This picture states the euchromatin, which is lightly stained and uh, heterochromatin is darkly stained. So, here we can able to see the interface nucleus and the chromosomes is seen in the pro-metaphase nucleus. Nucleolus. So, it is a prominent spherical colloidal acidophilic body, the bacteria and yeast lack nucleolus. Size, its size depends on the synthetic activity of the cell. Sperm cells, blastomeres have smaller nucleolus than oocytes, neurons and secretory cells. So number 1, 2 or 4, depending on the number of the chromosomes, the number will be varied. So then comes position, eccentric position will take. Cell nucleus anatomy. So this is how the nucleus appears. First, uh, we can able to see the outer region as the nuclear envelope. So in the nuclear envelope, we can see some pores that's named as nuclear pores. And inside the nucleus, as we see in the cell, cytoplasm can be seen. Inside the nucleus, nucleoplasm can be seen. And at the eccentric position, nucleolus can be seen. So in the second picture, we can able to see the nucleolus uh, anatomy where the granular portion and the fibrillar center and dense fibrillar component. So in the granular portion, free ribosome assembly can be seen. Fibrillar center, rRNA transcription can be seen. And dense fibrillar component, free rRNA processing can be seen. Chemical composition. It is not bounded by any limiting membrane. It contains traces of DNA, RNA, 70 types of ribosomal proteins, RNA binding proteins, for example, nucleolin, and RNA splicing nucleoproteins. It contains phospholipids, orthophosphate, calcium ions. It also contains enzymes like acid phosphatases, nucleoside phosphorylase, RNA methylase. Ultrastructure and function. They are sites for biogenesis of ribosomal subunits, 40S and 60S. RRNA are transcript for from precursor 45S transcript which undergoes processing by help of proteins, nucleolus, and u 3 RNA. All the components of the ribosomes are synthesized and assembled into two types of ribosomal subunits and are transported back to cytoplasm. Different stages of formation of ribosomes are initiation, production, maturation are completed in three distinct regions of nucleolus.
So in that nucleolus anatomy picture, we saw three regions, which is fibrilla center, dense fibrilla component, cortical, granular component. So we will see about it in detail. Fibrilla center, it represents the innermost region of the nucleolus. RNA genes of chromosomes are located here. Transcription of these genes are initiated here. Dense fibrillar component, this region surrounds fibrillar center. RNA synthesis proceeds based 70 ribosomal pro proteins bind to transcript in this region. So, where the, whereas in the cortical granular components, outermost region can be seen. So, this picture uh, describes the ribosomal protein into the nucleus, through the nuclear pore. And what happens, loops of, you know, our chromatin and structural proteins can be seen. Processing and transport factors are there. Are there. And the large subunit precursor pre-ribosomal particles, which comes out as a small subunit. Uh, large subunit precursor give rise to large subunit, which together give rise to the assembly with mRNP and uh, translation factors to form functional polysomes. Here we can see the dense fibrillar component, granular component in the side of the picture. First comes the fibrillar center, next dense fibrillar component and the granular component. Then comes the transcription and translation, where in the transcription, a codon is formed by the DNA base pairs, where we saw about the guanine, adenine, and uracil. So here the base pairs are formed and pre-mRNA is formed out of it. Here then the mRNA is released inside the nucleus which then escapes into the cytoplasm through the nuclear pore which can be seen in this diagram. So when it is inside the nucleus it is named as transcription. When it is outside the nucleus into the cytoplasm it is named as translation. So transport of mRNA from the nucleus into the cytoplasm this referred to as the translation through the nuclear pore. It is traveling into the cytoplasm and the codon is released out of which the ribosomal component is attaching itself to it. Large ribosomal component and the polypeptide chain is formed and growing protein chain is formed which can be seen. At last a protein is delivered. So in the next picture we can able to see the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So inside the nucleus only, as I said before, transcription occurs and the mRNA is released into the cytoplasm, which is known as the translation to the nuclear pore. And with the help of the ribosomal assembly, protein chain is released after the translation process. So three stages of transcription is there, which is the initiation, elongation and termination. In a simple terms, we can say it as start, build and break off. So in start, what happens? The transcription unit, the DNA, which initiates the process by releasing the base pair and the template strand of DNA is formed in the build. So it is building up its own strand for the next process to be happen. Next, it comes to elongation and then termination. At last, it break off and the completed RNA transcript which is then released into the cytoplasm through the nuclear pore, the mRNA is released. Stages of translation. So we saw about the stages of transcription. Now comes the stages of translation. See, the tRNA, that is transport RNA, carrying the first amino acid, which is, uh, it consists of two uh, uh, ribosomal subunits, as I said before, which is large and the small. It also has the certain stages of translation, which is first stage is initiation. So during which the components of the translational apparatus come together with an mRNA and tRNA carrying the first amino acid chain binds to the start codon. So from five, uh, three amino acid chain in the start codon, it is started. In the initiation stage, these base pairs comes and the translational apparatus together with the ribosomal units, it forms as a translational apparatus and from the start codon to the end, that is stop codon, which can be seen later in the termination stage, it is starting its process. So first initiation is initiated at the next elongation, which is during the elongation, amino acids are 
brought to the mRNA by tRNA. So this transport RNA is doing its work by making the mRNA, that is messenger RNA, to uh, it transporting the messenger RNA. Um, where the sorry, for example, sorry, during elongation, amino acids are brought to the mRNA by tRNA and are added. So this mRNA is brought brought to the mRNA. What is brought to the mRNA by the tRNA is amino acids. Amino acids are brought to the mRNA by the transport RNA and are added one by one. It is adding to grow a polypeptide chain. As I said before. Then it comes the termination stage. So first initiation is started, added the elongation is started and then termination is coming. So during the termination, a stop codon in the mRNA is recognized by a protein release factor. So in the initiation stage, start codon is there which is recognized by the ribosomal apparatus and the translation apparatus is moving thus producing the polypeptide chain which can be seen in the second picture. And then in the third termination, a stop codon in the mRNA is recognized by a protein release factor and thus the translational apparatus come apart, releasing a completed polypeptide chain. So then polypeptide chain is released, which is then recycling translational components are seen in this picture. Then comes the most important part of our discussion is mitosis. It is the process of dividing a single cell into two identical daughter cells. Main purpose of mitosis is for growth and to replace one of cells. It is divided into five phases. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and cytokinesis. So in interphase, what are all happening? So centromere is there and chromosome is there. DNA is copied and in prophase, chromosome is padded up. In metaphase, the chromosomes lines up to the equator. And the mitotic spindles can be seen in the metaphase stage. In anaphase, sister chromatids pulled apart to the opposite poles. And at last, telophase and kinos, uh, cytokinesis, cell pinches in the middle. So what happens? Two daughter cells are produced at the end. Two identical daughter cells can be produced. Mitotic cell of nucleolus. Appearance changes during cell cycle. During mitosis and meiosis, nucleolus disappears during prophase. As cell approaches mitosis, RNA synthesis stops, nucleolus first decreases in size and then disappears as the chromosome condenses. So in telophase only, RNA synthesis restarts where tiny nucleoli reappear at the chromosomal location. So in the telophase only, tiny nuclei reappear. So these stages can be seen here. What happens to the nucleolus in the mitotic cycle? In the interface, we can able to see the nucleolus and then comes the prophase, we can able to see. Metaphase, we can able to see. And telophase, metaphase, we can able to see uh, uh, without nucleolus. And in the telophase, the small body nucleolus can be seen. So in the telophase one, nuclear membrane and nucleolus reappear. Spindle shaped fibers disappear. So which can be seen in the previous phase, which is disappeared in the telophase at its last stage. Cytokinesis divides cells into two. So two daughter cells can be seen at last. At last, what are all the functions of nucleus, which is a very important thing in this part. So it controls all the activities of the cell. It synthesizes the RNA and forms the subunits of ribosomes. It sends genetic instruction to the cytoplasm for protein synthesis through mRNA, that is messenger RNA. It sends the messenger to uh, cytoplasm for protein synthesis. So nucleus only uh, asks the mRNA, that is messenger RNA, to send its genetic instruction to the cytoplasm for the protein synthesis. Then it controls the cell division through genes also. At last, it stores the hereditary information in genes. And it transforms this information from one generation to the species of the next step. So, thank you for listening my lecture and uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you.